said so. Ah. We're working on your mini series to go through your bio. So we're going to jump straight into it. You were the man that took Marcos Madman Hernandez and worked out a deal with PBC. Why don't you let us know kind of how that worked out for you or how it came about? Um, actually, well, first of all, thank you for having us and supporting us and supporting Team Madman. Um, we basically, we had connections with pretty much all the companies, Top Rank, Golden Boy, uh, and of course, PBC, Al Heyman, um, Louis DeCubas Jr., and Mario Serrano, who's our publicist, shout out. I had sent them a, a tape of Marky performing, and um, they saw how long and rangy he was and how athletic he was. Right. And more importantly, they found out what kind of kid he was. And he was a real low-key guy. He was real focused. You know, didn't have a lot of... Low maintenance. Yeah, not a lot of foolishness around him. So it was easy for them. And the deal wasn't really that hard to do. It was... We presented it. They saw the talent. They saw the, the body. I mean... A big six foot one, six foot two, a hundred, and he started at 147 pound uh, Mexican fighter. There's a market for that, right. so it wasn't that hard. Right. So yeah, it got done. So now that you guys got your business established, uh, the rest of the country, as well as Fresno for sure, uh, seen him on Fox Sports One and definitely repping hard. Is that something that's how important is that to, to Marcos as a, as a as a kid from Fresno? Well, it's it's huge because that's never been done in this area by anybody. Um, you have a lot of different promotions going on and things like that, but that's never been done uh, at this level. So to have a kid who's nine and zero, who's on national TV and he has, you know, millions of viewers, it, I got phone calls from the East Coast. I'm from Boston originally. I got calls from Texas that had saw him, but more importantly, you saw people like Israel and Lara. You saw people who are Hall of Fame matchmakers were watching those fights on Tuesdays. The community being so small, whether, like you were saying, Hall of Fame matchmakers, the people that are in the actual business of boxing and the pro fighters themselves, they watch damn near every fight, right? Right. So and so we... The feedback of his performance, because he looked phenomenal, it was right. awesome. He's a fan-friendly fighter. He doesn't back down from anybody. You getting that feedback, how did you feel about it? I mean, one, as you personally being invested in the kid as far as your personal relationship with him, but then again, on the professional level, how did you see that progression of his name getting out there nationally? Um, I was happy for him because I feel like he worked really hard. Him and his father um, worked really hard to get to that point, and they never asked for anything but opportunity, and that's real important in professional sports, especially when you're developing young athletes. Everybody thinks, you know, I'm supposed to get all this stuff or I'm entitled to all these things. Really, all you are entitled to is an opportunity in your contract in boxing, that's it. So anything you get extra is a blessing. And I think a lot of people miss that. A lot of people on the outside of sports miss that because they assume everything in every sport is the same or these contracts are grandiose and they're huge. Marky makes good money when he fights, um, but it's, you have to, it's a progression. Right. You have to get to a certain level and a certain viewership to be able to attain big dollars. And that's a process. And people have to understand that and, and, and understand that 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 can't be finagled. Right. It has to be worked right. from fight one all the way to hopefully fight 27 and 30. Right. Then you being um, intimately familiar with the boxing scene here in Fresno, Jose Ramirez. Mm -hmm. uh, You've known him for uh, as a kid. You also having a, your own relationship with a guy by the name of Rick Morrigan. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend. To, who happens to be kind of the captain of the ship out here, running running the shows and stuff like that. Some of the fighters on the undercard, they're getting shine that normally is reserved for fighters that are further progressed, you know, down the road. Let, let, let me say this. What Rick and Jose, the franchise that they've been able to put together, with top rank is incredible. Let me say that and be clear. That's not normal. It is a phenomenal thing. It's, I hope it lasts, but st statistics say it, it, it won't because it's such a hard thing to do right. for, for one man to be distressed that comes on to his head right. every day to be able to pull that off. Right. And I think people go, we go and we enjoy it. I know I do. Right. I go and watch the shows, but do they understand to throw a 
a show of that magnitude, it takes six to eight months to even get everything done. Right. You know that. Right. You've worked in the nuts and bolts of it. For somebody to be able to sustain that. It's a pace, right? It's hard, yeah. I, I don't envy him, put right. it that way. Right. Um, Cause people just look at the finished product and say, oh, that was tight, it was good. Yeah. He probably just makes things happen. Nah, right. it's, a it's a lot. So I, I, I think it's incredible what they're doing. Um, I hope the fighters appreciate that platform right. because it, it's a local platform and it's probably the greatest local platform in the United States right now. By far, right? It's them and Iron Boy, I think, are the two best that do it locally. Right. Iron Boy does a great job in Arizona, too. Right. They, 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 they pump their fighters real good. It's, it's tight. When, I like I seeing these franchises. The celebrity theater. Something like that. It, it's it's cool. It's it's really nice to see right. the organization of it. And, and you can appreciate it from doing the AAU hoop circuit. It's like right. you get to see these guys young right. and watch them build and grow with them. So it's awesome. But let me, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Christian Prenup was the first person to do a franchise like that in this area at the Palace Casino right. on a smaller level. Right. But it was huge fighters. Right. Paul Williams, James Tony, uh, Robert Guerrero. Andre Ward, Saul Lomas. This is when y'all didn't see Saul Lomas when he was a shorty. I mean, so he was a problem. Yeah, he was a pro like he was a real problem right. in boxing to a point where Floyd Mayweather. People don't know this. Floyd was here. Right. Jay Prince was here. They were here looking at the talent. What that day looked like for you? Because I, I know that you were with Saul that day. Um, that day was that day was um, it was basically me and Leonard Ellaby having a conversation. Um, Floyd Mayweather's uh, part of his management group. And it, this was prior to Floyd fighting um, Oscar De La Hoya. That's so how far back that was. Floyd. Yeah, this was right Pretty Boy Floyd. Money yeah, Floyd. this is in Money Floyd. This is Pretty Boy Floyd. And and him and Saul had a conversation at the time. I was managing Saul, right. and um, we had a conversation. And and that was a big fight for Saul because from that win, he got the Showtime deal, um, which subsequently didn't happen because he got injured. He hurt his shoulder, right. but he was he was on to do a six fight deal with Showtime um, as an opening act for Andre Ward. Paul Williams, you saw where their careers went. Right. So a lot of people don't realize when they see Saul, this guy's a vet in the game. He right. he's he's seen it all. Right. And uh, that's my little brother. I love him to death. So him coming up, he was one of the. I know that before his time, there was people that held titles, but oh, for this yeah. new breed of fighters, for the new breed, he's the OG he guy. was the guy. And and a lot of young guys, they should plug into him. They should talk to him right. he because he he knows and he's been around dudes that are world champions now. Now. We got to go back to the whole history of it. Hector Lee Zaraga opened up doors for all of us. Yep. There you go. You see what I mean? Yep. So we have to show Fresno has a boxing history. I like to talk about the history of it. Right. I mean, and I came around when when I was in Massachusetts, I was around Marvin Hagler and all those guys and his right. brother Bobby Sims. I was a little kid yeah. running around those gyms. Right. So, Historical. Yeah, so, so I, you know, I've always been, I, I ended up going to school for other sports, but I always loved boxing. And so boxing is something that we, every, and you know, women that grew up watching boxing with their grandma and grandpa. So, I mean, it's a beautiful sport, but I think going back to the original topic is Fresno is doing a great job supporting the franchise. And it's a shout out to the fans of Fresno because they don't take it for granted and they, they show up for the shows. Right. For almost 15,000 people last show. That's that's awesome. That's parking. And that's yeah, that's parking, that's concessions. concessions, that's union people working, it's providing jobs. That's why I say the franchise is incredible. It's giving people an opportunity, all these different um, blogs and, and computer shows and, and, and the stuff we're doing now, that's all a part of that. Right. So it, 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 it springboards a lot of different things. So it's a quality thing for the community. And I applaud the community for backing supporting that. Them. Yeah, supporting them, because if they didn't come out, it wouldn't be nothing. Right. So, I mean, for every person who buys a ticket and doesn't hate on it and says, I'm gonna go and have a good time and enjoy myself, right. that's love and that's what it's supposed to be for our sport. Right. It's, that's the problem with boxing in the past. We didn't have a fan base that was loyal. Yeah. Unless it was like a huge fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now people just come and enjoy themselves. It's a good time. Right. So what, what what Rick and Jose and all them have done it's tremendous. Right. Um, and, and the guys on the undercards, too, they, they're pulling their weight. They're making interesting fights. I mean, the whole Kilo and uh, Joe Louis fight, that was a fight with guys with under, I believe, under 10 fights. Right. And it was like right. it was a big thing. deal. Yeah. It was a big deal. Show, yeah, it was a big deal. Right. And, and you can't discount that. You can't say it wasn't. Right. It was. Everybody had fun, right? Yeah, everyone had fun. It was tight. Those guys gave a show. I mean, so, you know, it right. was awesome. I liked so now it.